everywhere um, it's been a little while since I've been uh, in touch so today I have decided to do a video on a tune a slip jig um, and how we can ornament it and how we can put cuts taps rolls that sort of thing and uh, make it a little bit more interesting by adding maybe a little bit of variation too um, so the tune that we're going to work on today is a tune called The Booley House. Um, it's a slip jig, uh, which is written in 9-8. So we count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's what's known as compound triple time. So we count it in three groups of three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the tune for you without any ornaments at all and then we'll build it up from the ground, maybe add some cuts, then add some rolls and, and then we can uh, see how we can add a little bit of variation. So I'm going to include uh, the sheet music for you as well. Um, so here we are, this is the Booley House and this is without any ornaments at all, it's just the tune. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's the first line which is repeated and then we have the second two lines which form the B part. So it's A, A, B which is the form. So let's take a look at it from the top um, and I'm going to go through each bar and we're just going to have a look at the structure of it first. So here's the first bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm tonguing the first note and letting my fingers do the rest. And so bar two. Third bar. And the last bar on the first line. So what we want to try and do is we want to try and get all that in one long continuous breath if possible so it's going to go then we'll repeat that line again
So the B part, I'll take it again, first bar. And then the second bar of the second line. Third bar. And the last bar. So again, I'm going to put those together. Okay, so the last line, a lot of repetition of the first, uh, sorry, the second line. It's just the ending which is slightly different. So we've got. So that third line, third bar, sorry. And then the last. So I'm going to play it all the way through again without any ornamentation, just so you can get used to the tune. So here we go, nice and slowly. Okay, so let's take one bar at a time very slowly so you can get the movement of the notes. Second bar. Third bar. And then the fourth bar. And then we'll repeat that. So first bar on the second line. Second bar on the second line. Third bar. And then the fourth bar. So the third line is a lot of repetition. So the first uh, two bars are exactly the same as the first two bars on the second line. So the third line and the last line. Okay, so now you've got the basic tune without any ornamentation. Um, let's add a few cuts. Um, so I'll go bar by bar and we can see which notes would sound good if we had a few cuts. So. so on that one, I would just cut the first note. So I'm going from B to A, cut. And so on the second bar, we can cut the B. I'm cutting that high F as well, so I'm going. So 
we put those two bars together. So next bar. Same thing, I'm just cutting the A on the third bar, the first A. And then I'm going to cut the B. And so I'm just cutting the B on that. So I'll put the first line together with those cuts that I've put in. Okay, so that's the first part. <clears throat> so I'm going to start the B section with a cut on the F sharp. So it's going. And I'm separating the two Ds with a cut. Now, you can tongue them. That's absolutely fine. Or you can separate them with cuts. It's entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's what you feel works best for you. But for now, just to practice the cuts, I'm going to separate those two Ds with a cut. So. And I'm cutting that high A on that bar too. So first bar of the second line. So second bar. I've cut the high G. Same thing on the third bar. I'm going to do the exactly the same cut. So cut the F sharp. First F sharp and then cut the high A. And again, if you want to separate the Ds with cuts, or tongue them. And then the last bar on the second line. Yeah, there's nowhere I would really put a cut in there. I mean, you could cut the high F sharp. But I would just leave that. So the last line, again, same thing. I'm going to cut the first F sharp, separate the two Ds with a cut, and then the high A. And then second bar of the last line. I put a cut on the high G. And then the last, sorry, third bar. And then final bar. So on those last two bars, I've not put any cuts in. So I'm going to play the B section now with the cuts. Okay, so I'm going to play the whole of the Bully House just with those cuts that we've added. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so we've added some cuts to this tune. Um, now let's look at adding the tap to make uh, some of those cuts into short rolls or even long rolls. So remember that the short roll is cut tap, the long roll is the note cut tap. So the short roll takes up the time of a quarter note or a crotchet and the long roll takes up the time of a dotted quarter note or three eighth notes. So here we go. I'll just do it the first line. So I'm going to put a short roll to start with on the A. So it's going to go and again. So instead of just going cut, I'm going to add the tap to make it into a short roll. So, sorry. So, Cut, tap, G, F, A, B, C sharp, A. So try and get those cuts and the taps on the rhythm, yeah? So cut, tap, cut, tap, cut, tap, G, cut, tap, G, F, A, D, C sharp, A. So again. And so the next bar, we're going to put a short roll on the B. Again. So again, cut, tap, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, D, B. Okay, so the next bar, we're going to do the same as the first. And then okay so I'm going to put the short rolled in and play through the first a part twice Okay, so the B part, first bar, I'm going to start with a short roll on the F sharp. And we're cutting that high A, so same thing again. Okay, second bar. Again, short roll on the E. So third bar, same as the first. And then we just play out. Now on the A, we can do a long roll. So where with the short roll, it's cut, tap. The long roll, note, cut, tap. So you sound the note, then cut it and tap it. So that last bar on the second line, Note, cut, tap again. So, second line, first part of the B section. Okay, and third line, pretty much the same thing for those first two bars. So there's a repeat of what we did in the first two bars on the second line, so same thing. So last two bars, 
Now if you want, you can go You can just tap Tap the B, so And then the last bar Now if you want you could do a long roll or you could do a short roll and use the last bit where you would have tapped for a breath. So you can do this. Or you can do this. And then use that last bit for a breath. Okay, I'm going to play the whole B part now with the rolls. Now let's play through the whole tune. So first line gets repeated and then we've got the next two lines. So with the rolls and cuts. Okay, so the rolls that I'm using, the first one is the A short roll, so we're going cut, tap, cut, tap. Now some people like to cut with the B, or sorry, with the C sharp, or move the B finger, which is absolutely fine, you can do this. I prefer to do this. So that first bar, and so the B short roll, cut, tap with the B, so cut, tap, cut, tap. So I'm tapping with the A finger, you can tap if you like with both these two fingers, if you find it easier to you to move these two together. So I'm going, doesn't really make any difference. So the A roll, the B roll, A roll repeated, so the high F sharp roll in the second line, I'm cutting and tapping, so cut with the finger, tap, cut with the G finger, tap, so I'm actually cutting with an A and tapping underneath with the E, so it's going so cut, tap same thing with the E so cut with the A, tap underneath with the D now don't worry about having to move this little finger off it makes no difference um, and you're not going to hear the notes anyway it's a rhythm so third bar same F sharp short roll and then now with that dotted quarter note on the A, 
we're going to do a long roll, so it's going to go note, cut, tap. So you don't cut the note straight away. You sound the note, cut the note, tap the note. So you're going one, two, three, one, two, three, note, cut, tap. So. So if we do that whole line, line again we've got the repetition of the short rolls on the F sharp and short roll on the E so it's going to be and then the last bit or you can just do cut tap or just even a tap at the end. In order to get a breath. So when you're taking a breath, you must make sure that the breathing is in keeping and in rhythm with where um, the note is that you need to breathe on. Because there are no breathing marks written into this tune, and it's gonna be pretty much dependent on your whistle, on your physical anatomy of how long you can hold a breath for. So everyone's breathing is going to be different. So my suggestion for the breathing is to make sure it doesn't interfere with the rhythm. So the rule is you may have to substitute a short roll for a long roll, or you may even have to occasionally miss a note out in order to get a breath. But the idea is the most important thing is to make sure that the flow of the tune is not interrupted. Okay, so we've talked about playing the tune without the rhythm, we've talked about adding the cuts, and we've added some short rolls and a long roll on the A. So this next section, I'm going to have a look at how we can add some variations to this tune. Okay, so we can add some variations to this tune, um, and as long as we're more or less keeping to the same rhythm and the same tune, we can actually make some subtle changes to it. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna play the first, first A part, the first line, as we have done, and then I'm going to add a few little bits just to make a little bit of a variation. And then we'll show you what I've done. So I put a little slide going up to the high F and a cut, and I put a little sneaky little triplet there in, in at the end. So just to go over what I did. Now you can slide and cut. Gives it a nice little effect, or you can just slide it. So, so instead of going on the last bar, I put a little triplet in. So again with the variation. So that's a little bit of an idea of what you can do in terms of variation. Um, you can, again, substitute rolls, short rolls, maybe sneak a long roll in there. So you could go. So I just went, instead of going. I missed the C out and just did a long roll on the B. So I went. That's perfectly fine to do that. So, so 
substitute the B for a long roll. And again. Put that little triplet in there. So first line with a few variations. So second line, I'm going to play it and then I'm going to play it with a little variations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that short roll to a long roll. And I'm going to put a little uh, ascending. So rather than playing, I'm going to make a little variation. So, And then with the second bar, I'm going to do the same kind of variation. So the first two bars of the second line, as written, Now with the variations. And then you can carry that on if you want. So I'll play that line again straight with just as it's written with the rolls and then I'm going to substitute some of the short rolls for long rolls and add a couple of little notes to give it a bit of a variation. variations and so again same thing you can add those variations to this uh, the last line so so you can turn those into long rolls Or you could go or you could go really it's up to your imagination how you want to vary it and then the last bit put a little sneaky little crown in and then the last note you can just do a drag and slide Um, yeah, so it's up to you how much ornamentation you want to add and how much variation you want to add. So I'm going to play the whole of this tune now. I'm going to play it first time as written with the short rolls, long rolls and the cuts. And then the second time I'm going to add a few little variations just to show you how I can, uh, well, what I like to do in terms of variations. Now, depending on my mood or <laughs> what comes into my head, uh, I'll vary it differently each time and that's the great thing about this music you can do that so the Booley house Thank <laughs> you. 
So I hope you found this little uh, breakdown of the Booley House useful. Um, again, it's entirely up to you how you want to ornament these tunes. There's no right or wrong way. The most important takeaway from ornamentation is that it shouldn't affect the flow of the tune. And also, if you're going to add ornamentation, um, it's best to do it in a tasteful way so that you're not obscuring the tune or the rhythm of the tune. Um, Ornamentation is great, it, it gives a nice kind of authentic flair to the tune, but it can be overdone. So if you don't like a certain ornament, say like, oh, I don't want to put a short roll in, or I don't like a crown, or I don't like a cut there, then it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. It's um, all open to interpretation, and as I said, there's no one way of doing things. Um, most important thing is to make it interesting for you as a player, and to try out different techniques and to practice those different techniques so that you get good at them because they'll come up time and time again a short roll long rolls and they're all over um, and so if you use different tunes to practice them and you can get adept at them then once you've got the technique you can use those short rolls or long rolls or cuts or taps or whatever ornament you're going to use you can use them in whatever tunes you like um, so always think about how you're going to use your ornamentation and always think about the you know is it adding to the tune um because that's what it should be doing it shouldn't be detracting for the tune or obscuring the the melody or even worse still obscuring the rhythm so i hope you found this useful if you have done then it would be great if you could uh, give us a subscription and share it with everyone you know all the whistle players or the saxophone player, whoever you want. It'd be great to, to uh, share this along. So I'm planning to do a number of other of these um, breakdown videos of different tunes. Um, so yeah, if you like it, please subscribe and I will see you again soon for another Whistleblowers Breakdown. Okay, thanks very much and bye-bye for now.